Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on the accessory structures of the skin. So we've already talked about the uh, layers of the skin, and now we're going to talk about structures that are found in or on the layers of the skin. So specifically, we're talking about structures that originate from the epidermis and then extend into the dermis or hypodermis. So what does that mean in English, Ms. Delosier? It means stuff that is in the, the skin. So like, for example, you have your hair follicles that are in your skin and fingernails and sweat glands and other skin glands. So that's what we're talking about. So the first one we're gonna talk about is nails. Um, so nails are a protective covering on the ends of fingers and toes. Uh, there's a lot of nerve endings in your, in your fingers and there's a lot of nerve endings in your epidermis. Uh, and so uh, the skin underneath your nails is called the nail bed and that's the surface of the skin directly underneath your nail. And it is very sensitive. Um, and so you have a nail plate, which overlies that nail bed. And then um, the other part of the nail that you need to know is the crescent uh, pale half moon shaped region at the base of your nail plate. And that's called the lanula. I think I said that right. I don't know. I struggle with words with using them. I don't know what to tell y'all. Anyway, the next one is the hair follicle. The hair follicle is going to be present on all surfaces of the skin except for palms, soles, lips, nipples, and then certain parts of external uh, reproductive organs. So the follicle itself is a tube-like um, depression or like hollow that uh, goes down through the epidermal cells uh, and the hair develops there. And it extends into the dermis or the subcutaneous layer. And so there's three parts of the hair follicle. You have the hair bulb, which is like the bottom part of the hair follicle and that's where you find um, like the the root of the hair uh, is down right there at the at the base of the shaft and then at the at the hair bulb and then you have the hair shaft itself which is just made of dead epidermal cells so the only living cells are actually in the hair bulb um, and if you've ever pulled a hair out you can kind of see the bulb at the end um, so uh, all of those cells, those dividing cells, are fed by blood vessels, which are the hair papilla, and um, those are needed to nourish those, um, those cells. Uh, as we talked about when we talked about uh, melanin and melanocytes, the coloration of the hair is entirely based on the amount of melanin that's distributed in the hair. Uh, and then we have this right here, which is the erector erector pili muscle, and that is a muscle that actually takes the hair and either holds it upright or pulls it flat, depending on whether it's contracted or relaxed. And that's what happens when you have goosebumps. So the next accessory organ I want to talk about, accessory structure I want to talk about is the skin glands. Uh, and we're going to talk about each of the glands kind of separately. So we're going to start with the sebaceous glands. So sebaceous glands are also sometimes referred to as holocrine glands, and they're usually associated with hair follicles. They're normally just like off the sides of the hair follicles, and they produce sebum, which is like a fatty material, and then also any cellular debris that gets pushed out. Um, and sebum actually coats the hair and then like gets on the skin and it helps to kind of moisturize and keep the skin soft and waterproof. But excess sebum can go ahead and get kind of oily and waxy and can result in acne or very oily hair. Uh, because there are no hair follicles on your palms or the soles of your feet, um, you also don't find any holocrine glands there. So you don't actually have any sebaceous glands on the palms of your hands or the soles of your feet. Next is the sweat glands, which most of you are familiar with. They're also called the sudoriferous glands, and they're widespread throughout the skin. Um, and they, they start deeper um, in the dermis or the hypodermis, and they've got these ball-shaped coils that are attached to a long duct. And they kind of look like a monkey fist rope, if you know what that is. Um, and they have to be deeper because um, the sweat gland's purpose is primarily to respond to elevated body temperature and to produce sweat, which then is... Um, going to go ahead and help you uh, cool off through evaporation, through evaporative cooling. Um, so the eccrine glands or the merocrine glands, those are the ones that actually are responsible for that, responding to elevated body temperature. And they're super numerous. Um, 
so by being deeper, they're closer to the blood vessels, and so they're more responsive to that vasodilation and vasoconstriction. The apocrine sweat glands are found primarily in the groin and armpit area, um, and their their secretion mechanism is a little different. But typically, you get um, you get secretion of sweat from those glands in response to uh, emotions or pain. And so like if, you, if you've ever been someplace where you got really nervous and your armpits got sweaty, that's, that's what we're talking about there. There's also these two other glands, the serominous glands, which produce earwax. Um, those are modified sweat glands. And then mammary glands in the breast, which produce milk, are also actually modified sweat glands. So I'm going to give you this table, which is in chapter six of your textbook. Um, and it actually has like a little summary of all of the glands. So if you're just looking for like a quick, you know, place to look, that's that's the best location for you. Uh, that's it for your notes on uh, accessory structures. If you have any questions, go ahead and make an appointment to do some tutoring.